HMP Pentonville in London is one of Britain's toughest prisons. Over a whole year, for the first time on television, the BBC has followed repeat offenders inside jail, outside on release, Freedom. and even back inside again. Mick is stuck in a cycle of homelessness and petty offending. The only way I could survive outside for longer than Friday is to click on. This is where we live, because it's least we're under, under the shelter there. Shennel wants to put a violent past behind him. Um, robbery, burglary, offensive weapons, and that sort of stuff. But life in prison is easier to cope with than life outside. You are not helping me, Dan. Oh, yeah. come out of jail, man. I want to stop drinking. I need help. Half of prisoners from Britain's jails re-offend within one year. Each one has their own story. <laughs> Seven thousand five hundred offenders come in and out of Pentonville every year. Three criminal damage. On the left hand side, okay. Mick Norman is a regular. He's forty-three and has hundred and nineteen offences on his record, most linked to crack and heroin use. Norman. Norman. This time, he's inside for stealing bottles of spirits, which he sells for cash. Right now. Mick would rather be locked up in Pentonville than free. You know, I'm safe. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm clean and sober. I've got a bed, my food's here, I've got a job, I've got tobacco, I've got friends, I've got staff I know. And out there, I'm, I'm, I'm living at the bottom of a block of flats in a bin shed. No money, um, I've got no ID, so I'm not claiming. All I need is... <laughs> I don't feel like you. <laughs> it's all you want, you know, something to say, you'll be all right, you know. It ain't going to be like that, is it? So, my safest place is, is the Pentagon. Staff do try to prepare repeat offenders for release, but every day there are more urgent challenges to face from Pentonville's many difficult and dangerous inmates. <laughs> Today's duty governor has to deal with a mentally disturbed prisoner who's refusing to take his medication. He's incredibly aggressive and won't even entertain any staff attempting to help him, um, which is when we see him spitting at staff and punching staff and throwing things and he secretes weapons to try and use against the staff, so it's very, very tricky. The team is taken away from normal duties and sent to the healthcare wing, just to make sure the prisoner gets the treatment he needs. He's very, very volatile. Even if he is compliant at first, please remain on your guard because he does have a history of staff assault. Keep your shields down because he spits. Officers must give the prisoner every chance to comply, but make sure they are protected if he hits out. Since he refuses medication, staff must manoeuvre him into a position where it can be safely administered. Another new arrival. Shenel Bicer is 36. 
Seat. He's been in and out of jail since he was a teenager for robbery, burglary and assault. Have you been here before? Yeah. When was the last time you was here? Last year. What's your offence? What offensive what weapon? You a lot knife. Position of offensive weapon, yeah? Yeah. He's hoping a spell inside can set him straight. Well, I'm 36, so realistically I've done like 22 years of my life in jail. Outside, it, 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 it's hard because you got the, you got this to do. It's hard when you come to prison. It's easy. Do you know what I mean? Like you've got your your telly, you've got your kettle, you've got your meals three times a day. You know what I mean? It's it's easy. You got no bills to pay, no nothing. Do you know what I mean? So that's how it is. I wanted to come to prison today, do you know what I mean? Like, because it, it, it was too much for me out there because I'm an ex um, heroin addict and an alcoholic. So for me to come to prison, it helps me come out clean. Like, you know what I mean? That's why I'm here, do you know what I mean? Because I want to give myself a break and, you know. Outside prison, Chennel has fallen out with his fiance. He wants his mum to contact her. What well, did did you speak to Nina? And what she say? We can start again, Mum. Just tell that we can start again, and you know what I mean, Mum. Yeah, but Mum, I still love her, and that you know what I mean. I'm gonna go right, do what I asked her. Just tell her that I love her, and you know, and tell her to write me a letter so I know what's happening. Chanel will be in Pentonville for two months. On Sea Wing, staff are monitoring a prisoner who is creating a major disturbance. We have a chap on here, Mr. Kieran. He's um, been here for several weeks now. He's, uh, that's it now. That's him now, yeah. He's going home in, a, in the next few days, but um, he seems to be getting maybe anxious about that as well. The prisoner will be let out of his cell to get his lunch but Principal Officer Bartley has concerns. He's been banging his door, he's quite irate, he's asking, demand, making demands about all manner of things. If it comes to a restraint, then what I expect is three officers to be doing the restraint and Mr Lawrence will oversee it. Outside the surgery, the prisoner has thrown a plate of food at another inmate and officers are forced to restrain him. Stand him up. Stand him up. Right, okay. Mr. Lawrence. Right. Okay. Just not sneezing. Just give me a right check. No, not at all. Not at all. Down in the segregation unit, Sean Kieran will be searched, then led to a cell. He is nearing the end of a short sentence for a drunken fight. After two hours, Sean is calm enough to explain his fears about leaving jail. He has a drink problem and suffers from depression, and he's wanted more help from the prison. What, what's worrying you about getting out? I've got a lot to not look forward to. I'm probably going to lose my flat. I don't know if the gas and electricity is on. One thing that I've been given help for in the past was, you know, about utility bills, like getting in touch with gas and electricity people to say, you know, yo, I'm in prison. And this time round, it's been like I've been asking for someone to amputate an arm off themselves. Point is, I'm an alcoholic and I've been trying my best to stop drinking. And I'm terrified of going out, picking up, as I threatened to do, a bottle of Jack Daniels, and this time chugging it like it was just water, you know, to hell with the consequences. Here you can stay clean and sober. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, once you're out in the real world, you know, it's a different matter. I'll get raw and drunk and end up dead somehow under a car. Someone kill me, thinking that I'm going to hurt them, you know. <laughs> At Pentonville, 
business can do courses or attend education classes, but many are locked up 23 hours a day. On G-Wing, Mick Norman is allowed out of his cell to work as a cleaner. I shouldn't say it, but I've got a bit of a soft spot for Mr Norman. <laughs> Norman, you know what they say, a woman's work is never done. I don't know what he does outside, you know, maybe he's a total pain in the arse outside and his victims probably would have a different thing to say about it, but in here is as good as gold. Mick is currently drug free. But years trapped in a cycle of prison, addiction and homelessness have left him estranged from his family. Where do you um, stay when you go out there? Unless I've got safe housing. Yeah. I'm going to be back. So I'm better off here. I've got my food, I've got a bed. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's a sorry state of affairs, isn't it? Yeah, I'm not the only one, am I? You've got family outside and everything, haven't you? Yeah. Where are your kids? With their mums, with, with my family. I don't even see them. Why? What do you mean I don't come out of jail and say oh, I'm back again for a couple of weeks and piss off again? So I'm better off not seeing them, you know. I ain't seen my boy for nearly two years. He's, he's 16, he? he ain't even got a mum. He lives at my mum's house. I've, I've had him since he was a baby. But how do you know that he he feels like that? How do you know that he no, doesn't he, want you to come round? And... Because, because it doesn't matter what he wants, my mum don't want it. You could write her a letter and just explain how you feel. So I've said it all time before, to think about it. I've said it all before. I, I just don't think you can sort of give up, really. I just don't think you... I think you just got to keep trying, basically. Keep trying. Perhaps I will. My son hasn't got a mum or nothing because he's his grandmother's ass. I stay out of contact with him because that's better for him. The best thing I can do is stay away from my mum because then I'm, I'm doing the right thing by my son. Till I can be a responsible parent again and a productive member of society. I've got no right to be around him at the moment. He's safe, he's doing well at school, he plays music, he's a mentor for other kids. I'm really proud of him, but... And I'm missing him, don't get me wrong, I've got... I don't know, um... He's been born, you know what I mean? Mick will be out in just three weeks. Local councils seldom offer immediate housing to newly released prisoners, so it's up to the prison's drug support team to try and find him somewhere to sleep. Down in segregation, officers deal with a dirty protest every few weeks. Sean Kieran has now become so desperate about his imminent release that he started one too. Put shit on the observation panel. So there's two things there. We can't see in, so we can't do for his protection and his welfare. But we've got to see in. Excrement in there. Yeah. We should get kitted out. All right. Yeah. yeah. We'll get the white suits on. We'll do it. Because it could end up all over the top. The rules are that dirty protesters must stay in the same cell until they have ended their protest. So, staff have to clean up around Sean Kieran. It's nothing we've never seen before. It's nothing we'll not see again. We'll just see it every other day. It happens once or twice a month. Even if they're on a dirty protest, prisoners must be offered food. Right, Kieran. Stand back yourself. Sean Kieran is becoming increasingly disturbed. You have lost now. Because even if I get out of here, I'm going to do something really off the fucking grid. Right. Stand to the back of the cell. Fuck you. Fucking hard. Fucking 
It takes another day in the segregation unit for Sean Kieran to bring his protest to an end. I freaked out. Again. But I'm alright now. You're alright now? Yeah. So you woke up this morning and things felt better? Yeah, I was thinking a lot more clearly. Making stupid remarks like Glasgow kissing and all that, you know. I suppose in a way it's like false bravado, if you like. Shennel has been in jail a fortnight. He sobered up and started thinking about what keeps dragging him back inside. I, I know what, what has triggered me off to be like is like when my dad passed away like seven years ago this August. I do think about my dad, but it's hard. Like, I still think my dad's at home, like, drinking his whiskey and that, you know? But he ain't. That's what made me go a bit cranky. So I, I, I've, got to, I've got to let go, but I don't think I've let go yet. Though he's calm inside prison, Chanel is anxious about what's going on outside. Obviously, I love my girl, innit? I was going to get married to her and all that, but I don't know what's going on. She hasn't even sent me a letter or nothing, so I don't know, I'm just I'm irrit irrit irritable, you know what I mean? I mean, it's horrible, man. I'm worried about her, but I don't know if she still loves me or not, I don't know. Just have to find out, wait and see, you know what I mean? McNorman will be freed today, but because his sentence is under 12 months, he'll have no probation officer. He may also have nowhere to stay, and weeks of delay before he can access benefits. The only way I can survive outside is to commit crime. I've got, you know, where am I going to sleep the night after? What do I eat the day after? Where do I go? What do I do? Where do I wash? Well, you know, I'm a street beggar. You know what I mean? I'm a grafter, so I'm going to go out and graft to earn me fucking money. Why well, am I going to sleep on the street when I can go and earn myself one and a half, two hundred quid in the morning? And I can do the same in the afternoon. I've got to pay for an hotel for a week or so, but it's still the wrong road, isn't it? The worst you can get from me is here. It's the worst that can happen, is this. And, you know, I ain't got to pay for this, have I? <laughs> Sad, I know, but it's true. Good luck. Thank you, miss. Hopefully we won't see you soon. Hopefully, but... Right, so... I've left my bed, as it is. No, that's not the attitude. You set yourselves on hold. No, well... <laughs> for the day. I hope we don't see you back. I won't. Take care. See you after, Miss. Thanks, Thank you. See ya. We've got 1567 of your own money, we're giving you £7.70 fares, £46 discharge bonus, it's up with 6937 You happy you got everything? Yes, miss. Right, you got to behave yourself? We won't hold our breath on that one, really. The prison has set up a meeting for Mick at a housing charity, but even if he can tackle all the bureaucracy involved, he has no guarantee of a roof over his head tonight. So, plan is go and get me birth certificate, shoot the tooting back, get me final assessment, try and get the housing benefit forms in. If they accept that, I might be able to get in the property today. If they don't, and I've got to wait more than five, four or five days to get in anywhere, I'm not prepared to stay out on the street for four or five days, so I'll prefer to come back to Penneville. So what do you think your chances of staying out of this jail for the weekend are? This time round, 60-40. 60 in your favour. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's, it's out of my hands. I've done what I can do. I'll give you a call. I'll go over there. Mick never did call. A few weeks later, we were to discover why. Sean is leaving too. After getting help from the prison's addiction support team, he feels calm about re-entering the world outside. On the day of his release, he even takes time to write a farewell letter. This is a letter from Mr Monaghan, the governor, 
Thanks to all at the Ville for their tough love, in no particular order of any kind, blah, 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 blah. Thanks, in the final analysis, for looking after me, yours sincerely. Peace and love, Sean Kieran. So you feel you've been well looked after here? Yeah, really. Because, you know, things are done for, for a good reason while you're here. You know, you don't always understand why. A happy customer? So to speak, yeah. <sighs> Freedom! Mel Gibson, Braveheart. Peace. Look after yourselves, lads. Despite his anxieties inside jail, Sean still has a home to go to. Home again, home again, jiggity jig. I've got lots to keep me active, to keep me uh, away from trouble. That's my, you know, release from prison to back home. So far, so good? Yep. Shenel Bicer has been waiting for news from the woman he hopes will one day be his wife. It's been a good week for me, so far. I've got two letters. She's saying that, um, that when I get out, like, we're going to start again, try for a baby, get married, that sort of thing. So, yes, like, she's telling me she loves me, which is a good thing, do you know what I mean? Because I was paranoid. Because when you come to prison, you do get paranoid, like, you, you, you think, like, they're doing the same kelps out there, you know what I mean? But all girls ain't the same, do you know what I mean? And she's even put like Nina Bicer. So I'm just waiting for her to give a big kiss. You know what I mean? Cuddle. Reassured, Chanel now gets to work and takes up some of the opportunities the prison has on offer to prepare for life outside. No one can say I've been sitting down, doing nothing. I'm doing things in jail while I'm in jail. By the end of next month, I will be drug free. I've got three certificates already. I've got a change in possible. Change is possible, sorry. And I've got relaxation. And I've got heroin. That was the main one. That was my main one for, for my drug use, you know. Hopefully, you know, I'll, um, I'll get a job. You know what I mean? and just live a normal life like other people. Because I'm fed up with this. It's not me no more. I've done my time, you know what I mean? I've served my time. Another repeat offender, Graham Shields, is nearing the end of a 16-month sentence for robbery. Graham is 32 and has been a shoplifter for over a decade. He had a steady job, but gradually, crack cocaine took over. I feel kind of guilty of the way that I turned out. But crack's quite a powerful drug and it drains your soul kind of thing. I was working uh, for a commercial artist company at the time, Curry, and I lost my job there. I was become unreliable. I stopped eating. So then I started going out shoplifting every day like it was a job kind of thing, getting up. Um, Go and hit a couple of shops, go and sell that, put the money in my pocket, go and smoke crack. Graham was just one of those people who I've probably seen him coming into prison probably six, seven times in the space of 18 months. We'd always have sort of a, a, bit, of a, a bit of a conversation about what had gone wrong for him this time. How many times have you been in jail, Graham? About 42 times uh, since 98. I started coming to jail. So it's quite a few times. Good 40, 42 times. Yeah, including this time. No. Graham will be out of prison again in three weeks. This time, the authorities have him in their sights. Because he's a prolific offender, it's a top priority to stop him committing crime.
General Beiser completes his prison sentence today. He leaves Pentonville sober and focused. Going home this morning. Can't wait. Can't wait. Can't wait to get out that door. Can't wait. Did you see on site? No, not really. Not really. It's hard. Yeah, I feel positive. I don't want to do what I used to do, come out, smoke drugs and drink and this, that and the other, you know what I mean? I want to come out straight-headed and, you know what I mean? I want to change my way now. Put your index finger on that red light. Unlike many who walk out of these gates, Chenel will at least have somewhere to stay with his fiancée, Nina. In recent years, Chenel has failed to stay out of jail for long. Now he will try again. Mick Norman lasted just two weeks outside jail. Homeless, he shoplifted to get himself put back inside. But this time, he was sent to a prison where he didn't feel at home. And now he's out again. How are you? Hello, Michael. I'm very well. How are you? I'm oh, a bit of a getting out of there. I've, I've, you know, I've been all the way in the country in prison. That's the worst one I've been to. So. Is it? Yeah. Or is it different from Pentagon? Yeah, different. I mean, you get fed Sunday lunch time. You don't get another hot meal till Monday night, 29 hours between meals. So me back to Pentonville. That's put me off of jail. That's put me off of coming back. Send you one night. Right. Send you one night, yeah. I've, I've spent 14 and a half years living up in prisons. Most of it on my mind. You know, it's, it's a fucking long time. I'm getting nowhere fast. I'm getting older, slower. You know, the chances of getting caught are a lot greater. There's cameras everywhere. They, I'm known. Oh, I'm sick of it. Hopefully. My last look at the jail. Hopefully. I, I can't remember what fucking normal was. You know, we all mugs in prison, I'm a mug being in prison. But that's all I fucking know. We all get on, we all know each other. I've never gone to prison, 30 or prisons. 30 or prisons I've been to. I've never walked into prison and not known somebody. I always know someone. Hello, Mickey. How's it going, son? Same shit, different fucking day. I live that side of the stadium. They never show this side of the stadium. Come over and have a look. Come and go, 10 billion. Well, they can't find me a fucking bed. This is the proper stuff. That's, that's the new stuff. Built for image. This is the old stuff. Straight the centre. Come. Take it in my world. I'll give you breakfast over there in the morning because she's free. There's this big tube and you can eat some big sandwiches and a bottle of Coca-Cola. Life is short with stuff. That's what it is. I'm living there, Paul. Walk there. I'm out there. Look, 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 look. 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 No one would have noticed you on me, so it all depends how it works. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. I could say, go hey, fuck it, I'll be all right till after Christmas. Go back to Pentonville, go to Belmarsh, I'll be all right, know the officers, get on the right. I don't want to. You know, I've done my last day in prison as far as I'm concerned, I've made my mind up. Mick is homeless and has only his prison discharge grant to live on. But for once, he'll now seek money and shelter the legal way. Graham will shortly be released from prison and will complete the last eight months of his sentence outside in the community. At the local probation office, plans are being made to handle his release. Yeah, Graham's coming out and, um, yeah, yeah, we're going to take him straight to um, Norman House. Kevin's coming as well, the police officer, so he's going to come with us in the car. He has a really poor record of compliance with probation and he is literally a revolving door 
um, where it really is catch and convict, catch and convict, because he doesn't engage and he's never complied with any type of orders. Graham has been put on a new scheme called Integrated Offender Management, which targets the most prolific criminals to stop them reoffending. This is the biggest stick and the biggest carrot that he's had. Inside jail, Graham gets work experience. Outside, he'll have a job placement and a hostel place. But if Graham... doesn't play ball, probation will send him straight back to jail. If you re-offend, um, you will be recalled to the end of your sentence. I feel different this time, I do. I was yeah. saying I do. I don't know what it is uh, like to say what I've done different or anything like that, but inside, I don't know whether it's to do with maybe having been away a bit longer, um, because in the past, prison hasn't worked for me. If Graham can leave them prison gates and stay clean for the first night, then I will be really, really happy with that and really also pleasantly surprised. Shenel has been out for 11 days. He has got a place to stay with his fiance, Nina, but he started drinking. And today he's been involved in a serious car accident, which he can't remember. I just see bounce off the fucking bonnet, roll onto the top and roll off the back. Mm. Right? And I mean, this kid's come quite fast, really. Well, I don't know what, what speed, but it was fast. People that weren't just stop the street, everyone's like that. Right, women are crying, holding their mouths. Right? I'm screaming with blood all over my hands. Seems like nothing ever right fucking happens right for him, do you know what I mean? Like many newly released offenders, Chennel is also struggling to get his first regular benefits payments. I come out of prison, yeah, about 14 days ago, yeah? Yeah. It was like, you know what I mean? I'm due my money, and because my claim ain't been sorted out, miss, basically, I've had to, like, ask people in the street for money and that, which I have been doing. They're telling me I've got to go back to the job centre. They've, in, they've paid me incorrectly. They give me £36 pound and they've got, I've got to go back to put it in writing so they can fax it over and then that's why I'm going to fucking commit crime. Jenny, you're too old for this shit now, man. Come on. Just, it's not worth it. But I'm not fucking happy, Nick. I'm not happy. I'm not fucking happy at all. I'm not fucking happy. Fucking hell. So I've got to phone these people up and try and get across this road. But you can't give me no money. Right, so how do I get my, 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 um, my crisis loan done then? Ah. That's a joke, man. That's why I got to October. This is where I was here. That's why I was here. I was dead. I was, I was dead. I was dead, man. I was dead. I was dead, but I'm still living. How much is a super skull? Chennel has stayed drug free, but alcohol has him in its grip once again, and he soon finds all his plans falling away. If my dad was here, he would have helped me. Happy he's not, honey, so we got each other in me. It's just was if my dad was here, man. Just try and say, oh, are you alright? No, I'm not. She knows. I see Daddy's hurting. She can see Daddy's hurting. I told you I'd come to bereavement counselling with you. We'll, we'll, we'll deal with all that. We'll go anger management. 
um, keep you occupied and myself, you know, and we can get through this hunt. We can. Do you know what I mean? We can, Baba. We can. Yeah? We gonna do this? Yeah? Try her. No. Oh. Well, trying's better than nothing. Three months after his release, Sean Kieran hasn't gone back to drink. How's it going? Good. Yeah? Good. With help from a local charity, He's taking the first steps to free himself from addiction. At the moment, you're in a good place, and I haven't seen you in this place since I've known you. Bottom line, I'm turning my back on the booze. It sounds a bit vague, but, you know, I've had sort of glimpses of happiness, you know? Whereas before, I was just sort of like muddling through and just coping and, and just going through the motions, if you like, of life. Every time I see a bottle anywhere, every time I see a pub or an off-licence, I mentally say Expelliarmus to it. Is that from? From Harry Potter. Harry Potter? Yeah. That's a defensive spell. Yeah. Graham will leave prison tomorrow. Once he's out, he wants to stay clean and rebuild bridges with his family. You see, my relationship with my, with my dad's not, not, not a good one, kind of thing. He's um, kind of old school, old man. He's washed, washed drugs, um, kind of thing. Like, if you, if you want to stop taking them, just stop taking them, kind of thing. It's easy. Just get a job and, and I've, I think he... I think that's what he thinks. I don't know what he thinks because I've never actually asked kind of thing. So, but he's not well, and um, I don't want to just go and fix up relationship because he's not well. But I want to fix up relationship so that we can have a relationship kind of thing. Whether that means just coming around every couple of days to see that they're all right, maybe take him to church or something. I know it. I think he would like to, like to do that if I could somehow do that. All you need to do is sign and date a copy of your licence. 16312. My stomach starts turning, you know, I'm butterflies kind of thing. I, I'm excited as well. I am, I'm, I'm really excited about getting out. But that still doesn't take away the fact that it's a, it's a bit of a frightening experience. Most repeat offenders walk alone from the prison gate. <laughs> Road. <laughs> you alright, Rachel? Because Graham is on the IOM scheme, he is met by probation and a plainclothes police officer. The first hours and days outside are a critical period. Mick Norman has been out two days. He's still homeless and his prison cash is running out. I'll show you something that'll make you change your mind. This is where we live, because it leads to be under, under the shelter there. We can throw that old head through there, there's a big room, but it's really short, it's in there at the moment, recent candles in there, might be able to grind it up, a bit of paper or something. But... Can, you show, can you show me that? Yeah, of course. In here. We've got a big lump of carpet we put in there. We ain't put it down yet because we haven't sorted the floor out yet. But we might put a bit of white emulsion on it, get a few candles in there and brine up. That'll do for the winter. We've got nowhere. This is where we've all been living. Um, so you, st you slept here the other night? I've slept here since I come out, yeah. David's an Amanita. Yeah, I beg. Yeah, he, he begs. Yeah, that's I'll what be he does. That's what's the only thing. But before that, yeah, I was in and out of jail all my life. How long have you been here, David? Uh, six months. Six months in Yeah, this, this spot. time, six months, yeah, on the road. What's it like sleeping here every night? <laughs> bad. Very, very bad. It, it ain't nice because you get people coming into the park, car park and they look at you like you're a bit shit. 
Like, but anyone could, they could all be homeless tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, that's life in Stratford. Over the next days, Mick persists with his attempts to get housing and benefits. There's no possibility of housing anywhere coming out of that, is there? Yeah. Don't laugh. So, are you ringing up about the job centre appointment you're trying to sort out, or are you ringing up about the community care one? And I'm looking to see if there's accommodation available with you still. Then Mick gets some welcome news. His son, whom he hasn't seen for nearly two years, wants to meet him. He's made contact with me, and since then we've been texting, and um, hopefully our next day or two I'll go and meet him when he's not busy and I'm not busy. And I'm, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it, you know. He said, oh, Dad, don't do it for Nan, for the family, for me. Dad, just keep with it, you know, and, and it's really given me a boost today. Cause, and I've got it, because I was, you know, you need that support. You need to come around again, you know what I mean? And, uh, yeah. Today, Shennel is at court. He's due for sentencing on an old public order offence. There's a risk he'll be sent back behind bars. The outcome is crucial for his and Nina's future, but he's drinking again. In the middle of the hearing, Shennel storms out of court. Hostiles are saying now that because they're saying that I ain't been cooperative with these lot, I could be going to prison. The details of the court case become a flashpoint. Right. Do you, know, Shannon, you don't need to shit, mate. mate. If you go in, well, how about, about you do it, mate? In St John's right way. Mate, go no, in there. Turned up to that one. That's not the one. Go in. It's the St John's right. Yeah, but they've got access about. to the computer. Taking that fuck over mine as well. I guess you are. You're letting them talk to me, you piece of shit. She didn't take no. Shut up, fuck. Shut up, Shannon. This is no one else's business, yeah. In the end, Shennel wasn't given another prison sentence. Instead, the court gave him a strict community order. He must get treatment for his alcohol problem under weekly supervision from probation. Nina is now desperate for Shennel to change. It's fucking affecting me. I'm so upset. Today, even again, he was going to cause more trouble, and we're waiting for a verdict to see that side of fucking call. I mean, I've made my fucking mistakes. I have, please believe me, I have fucked up in my life, big time. I have fucked up. Do you know what? I just want my life back, and it don't seem to be happening with this man. Don't seem to be happening. If you want to make a change, make a fucking change, man. Do it. Don't blame it on everyone else. It's everyone else's fucking fault, in it? It's the system, it's this, it's that. Fucking deal with it yourself. Sorry, that's nothing. Graham has been out three days. Today, he is booked for a work placement as a trainee gardener. Every time he's left jail before, he's gone straight back to crack cocaine, heroin and shoplifting. But this morning, he's at work on time. This is a Norway maple, yeah? That's chickweed. And I don't know what that one is. That's a leaf. <laughs> <laughs> This is positive. This has changed what I'm doing. I don't do this. I don't, I don't come, in the past, I haven't come out of prison and gone into work or, or anything like that. I'm keeping myself busy and out of trouble by, by doing this, you know, so. That's not to say that I'm saying I've cracked it or anything. It's the first day, but I hope it's the first of many. In three days' time, Graham is due at probation. In the past, he's never managed to attend. Half an hour late now. How long are you going to be? 
I know. Oh, brilliant. Okay, thank you. Bye. Graham Shields is here. He was quick. He was yeah. quick. I couldn't sleep last night. Graham has got through his first five days out of prison. How do you feel about how far you've come already? I feel, I feel good about it. You're going to your meetings, you're doing everything that's required of you as well on your licence. Just keep taking it one day at a time, but so far, mm -hmm. I'm feeling really positive, do you know what I mean? All right, then. But Graham was about to get some tragic news. One week after release, and Mick is still on the streets. But he's about to see his son for the first time in two years, and he wants to look his best. Look, this is not nice American pair of shoes. Have a look. Mm. I don't know they're what size is. Well, they're not shoes. Yeah. Well, they're a bit obviously worn well, off, but... Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, they fit as well, yeah. That does for me. If some are wrong, look at that. Yeah, it's bang Excited, nervous. Um, he's a young man now, isn't he? He's just been praising you and saying about how well you're doing and that you're actually trying. Yeah, but college ain't going too bad either. What, like when you, I was what are you studying there? Performing arts. Just performing arts? Yeah, it's a performing arts college. Oh. That's why I love it. It's full of dancers. There's like 40, 50 girls that's going around the college in tutus all day. I don't care what happens to me. If, you know, if you never spoke to me again, Nan didn't, Jack didn't, and everyone didn't, I'd have to get on me. I still wouldn't go back to prison. I can't make fuck all up for you. All I'll do is tell you I'll beat you in the future. You would. Don't you know you can't help yourself, you know what I mean? I'm fucking a bitch, you know what I mean? You boy. Yeah, yeah it's just, <laughs> just emotions, innit? You know what I mean? Oh, by the way, you're a little man from there. <laughs> can't help you all into now, I know. But it's, um, yeah. I've got to do whatever happens, I'm, I'm not going back to prison, you know? The drink and drugs is out of the window, and if I've got to sleep up the tree for the next three weeks, I will. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll love you. Me too. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a ring tomorrow. I'll give you a text later. Right. It's only when you get a bit older and you've what you lost and the time you missed out on things that you realise what really matters. And at 43 now, I realise what matters is your mum and your dad and your family and your kids. Because without them, you, you've got to fuck off. I didn't see it in life. That's just giving me the boost for the next few weeks, whatever I face. I could not let that boy down again. When we met Chanel again, he'd spent the previous night sleeping rough, believing his relationship was over. And you're not in the flat anymore? No. So you've been sleeping on benches? In the park, yeah. And hybrid. I'm that close from committing a crime. I haven't done it for five months, but I will. I'm telling you, I will. I just want my life on track. That's all I'm crying for, man. My life on track. It just seems that I'm not getting it. As part of his sentence, Chennel's progress must now be monitored every week by a probation officer. Chennel's, particularly his most recent offending issues, are, are all linked to his, 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 his alcohol very much, um, getting, in, getting into altercations with people, becoming violent, being threatening and abusive in, in, his, in his language and his behaviour. Uh, so it, that, I guess, is why the court was so keen to, to, to throw this opportunity for 
the alcohol treatment because if, if Chanel can look at that and address that, a lot of a lot of the the risk, you know, may may dissipate. Detox is available for Chanel, but first he must attend group assessment. And so far, he's told probation that although he desperately wants detox, he won't go to the group. You're going to be putting me in a fucking detox. What's going on, mate? Okay. You're doing nothing. Where's my detox? I want a detox. I know. We've, we've, we've talked. No, no. No. You know what, Dad? Let me tell you something. Breach me, mate. Breach me. Because I'd rather do my detox in jail, wouldn't it? I want to do my detox in jail. Okay. Right? I'm getting pissed off waking up like this every fucking evening. Dad, you know what, mate? Do what you got to do, mate. I've come here, I've seen you, you're talking shit to me. You haven't. We, we, you haven't let me talk at all. But you I, come I, in. I, 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 I'm not talk. Okay, can, can we not? So, my understanding of the situation was that there's also this thing called the options group, which is down at the, the Margaret Centre, which I think you, you would have to go to that as part of the. What am I going to go and sit in a, in a group for? For what? Because that is, that's part of the process no, of being referred no, to. No, 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 no. I am not going. And I'm telling you that now. Right? I've got a drink problem and I want help with it. I'm not going to sit in a fucking group and talking shit. Sorry, Dan. I'm not doing it. It's really hard for me to help you when you come in like this. When you come... Because, oh, no, no. no you because, me? No, I'm, I'm not, sleeping no. in the park. Okay, there's a lot of stuff... Where's... Oh, no, where were you sleeping? Where were you sleeping? That's not really relevant. Where, no, it is irrelevant. Why is where that were relevant? You, what, where were you sleeping? In the house? Yeah. Or flat? What? And I'm sleeping in the park. Okay. <laughs> what? That's not irrelevant. Okay, thank you. Graham was working at the garden centre when his boss received a call. I had a phone call from this woman who introduced herself as, as Graham's mother and she said, I've got some awful news, Graham's father's died. And I just said, Graham, would you come back with me to the office? And he looked at me not knowing what's going on and I just said, sit down, I've got something to tell you. And I just did think, mm, this is a, a likely trigger for him to go back on the drugs again. Graham's not doing so well um, at the moment, and uh, so he's been recalled on his licence. Um, he provided he provided three positive drug tests in a row. It, it, you know, it, it's tragic. You know, you see, you work with these offenders, and just as they're getting their foot on the ladder, you know, something else tragic happens. Once probation has recalled Graham to prison, it's the police's job to arrest him. But Graham cannot be found at any known address. He's on the run. For Chanel, things are starting to go right, despite all his problems. Seven months after leaving prison, he is cooperating with probation and has got assessment for detox. He has stayed off drugs, out of trouble, and his bond with Nina survives. He's my baby. I love him. I love him to bits. We want what I suppose what everyone wants. We just want a normal life. I don't want to be meeting any other people, anyone else. Do you know what I mean? Can I talk to someone about getting married? Yeah, just go to the ministry office. Right. You go straight down first. Yes. These are the documents you need to bring. So you need to make an appointment for it. We need to come in together for the appointment. I'm getting married. <laughs> Can't wait. Can't wait, man. It's the longest I've ever been out of prison. Thanks to Nina, you know. If it weren't for Nina, I don't know what I'd be doing now. After four weeks of trying, Mick Norman finally got a place to stay. Then things moved on quicker than he could ever have imagined. The place I got, which is his studio flat, 
I ain't, I ain't Buckingham Palace, but it's, I'm grateful. You know, it's big enough for me. In, in that time, I've moved in there. Within two weeks, my boys landed on me. Mum's run, can I take my son back? Over the moon, who would have said that three months ago? Dang, or two months ago, that you're going to have your son live with you. Mick's new role is to get a teenager out of bed in time for college. I bet he's still asleep. <laughs> this is the place anyway. Yeah, nice oh. big room. Yeah, got the kitchen there. Got a decent bathroom there. Decent shower. Got plenty of toiletries out there and there and plenty of towels. What else do you need? When you used to get living in about 8 by 12 cell for years. I mean, this is like, this is like luxury, isn't it? I spoiled that. <laughs> nah, he's alright, he's good stuff. He's, he's on his own journey, you know. What have you lost? Nothing. You know, the blue ones are there? I'm not looking for the blue ones. Them, them. I've got to sort out the lasers on them. What? They got that tight the other day, yeah? Mm. I literally had to cut the laces in order for me to get off. Oh, it's because like, when we grew up, we used to have to undo our laces and then do them up and we put them on. No, no. just tie them up once and then slip them on. First of all, my dad's been walking around in these, yeah? Yeah, a 70 pound pair of exclusive Adidas trainers. Who's are they? Mine. Who mind? cooks? Huh? Who cooks? Who does the shopping? Who does the washing? Aye? No comment. No comment. <laughs> Can't have a shower. My life was right revolved around crime, around addiction, around alcoholism. Everything in my life that I thought was gone, lost, never coming back. All the, you know, for the last couple of years when I've been going back to prison because I've been homeless, everything I've lost, I've suddenly got back. I'm not allowed to fail. I don't want to fail. Graham Shields had been recalled to prison after the death of his father. But he evaded arrest by the police for a month. Now he's back at Pentonville. I was engaging this time, I know I mucked up. But I was you were engaging to... brilliantly. It was just a shame that you couldn't maintain that. As mad as it sounds, I was I felt happy when I come back to jail. Because I knew that was it. Yeah, exactly. That was how I thought, you know what? I knew I didn't have to look over my back no more because I'm walking down Holloway Road thinking, is this the time? Yeah, yeah. When I did use, I thought I wasn't enjoying it. Yeah, kind yeah. Of thing. I'm not saying it's different if I was going out and I'm enjoying the smoking or, or I was having a good time on it or what. I won't. Yeah. We live and learn, don't we, Graham? Yeah, of course. Graham's brief period of success on the outside has given him some consolation. He died five days after I got out, so I didn't get a lot of time with him. But um, I'm just glad that he's seen me going to work and doing positive things, rather than um, I come out, spend my, my money on cracking heroin, and then I'm only coming around to borrow money, for instance. The good news is, is in my experience of probation, the fact that he went that far means that next time he'll go that far, and hopefully we'll just keep getting a little bit further. 